Good morning. My name is Reverend Julie Sterling. Welcome to Suffolk Presbyterian Church. We are happy to have you join us for worship today. This Sunday, we will continue to learn about Jesus' early ministry. In our Gospel reading from Mark, we hear another healing story. Those who are touched by Jesus are changed forever. Today, as we join in worship, I invite you to consider what your own experience has been as a disciple of Christ. How do you thank God for the gifts of good news? Also, how do you feed your own soul as you tend for the needs of others? Now, before we begin our worship service today, we would like to take a moment to share with you a few announcements for the upcoming week. was an ordinary fisherman who heard an extraordinary call. He wasn't rich or educated, but familiar with hard work. He was quick-tempered and impetuous, but possessed a passion that would change the world. He left everything to follow his teacher, yet struggled with doubt and fear. But Jesus saw in him what others did not, a rock on which to build his church. Join us as we explore Simon Peter. Friends, please join me now in our responsive call to worship. Let us pray. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to us since the beginning? Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. ourselves if we think our ways are hidden from God. Therefore, let us confess our sins, trusting in the mercy of God our Maker. Please join me in the prayer of confession. 
God, you are everlasting, the creator of all that is. Your understanding is beyond measure. We confess to you that we have sinned against you and against our neighbors. In your compassion, forgive us, for we place our hope in your steadfast love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God heals the brokenhearted and binds up our wounds. God takes pleasure in those who place their trust in his grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. The priest of Christ be with you, and also with you. Hello friends. Today we're going to be talking about recharging. I was cleaning out a drawer and I found my old iPod. I use this to listen to music, but when I went to turn it on, it wouldn't come on. It was dead. The batteries needed recharging. My husband has a similar item. He's got an iPad that he uses at work. He uses it to look up information about patients and to record what he thinks the plan should be to help them get healed. At the end of the day, he brings the iPad home and he plugs it in overnight because he knows it needs to be recharged for work the next day. You might have all sorts of cables around your house like we do for, at ours. You need them to recharge phones, tablets, game systems. We rely on the recharging for the things that we use in our life. Well, Jesus teaches us some things about recharging, too. He was traveling through Galilee with his disciples, and while they traveled, he would preach, and he would heal. He cast out demons. They went one day to the home of Simon and Andrew, and while they were there, they met Simon's mother-in-law, but she was sick. She was in bed with a fever, and Jesus went to her and held her hand, helped her to get up and she was healed, healed well enough that she went and she fixed them a meal. Well, before long, word had gotten around town that Jesus was here and he could heal. And many, many people came to the house. They were filling the doorway because they too wanted to see and to be healed and to hear the word of God. Well, after that long day, Jesus, you can bet, was very tired. He went to bed because we know sleep rejuvenates our body. It recharges our bodies. But when he woke up in the morning, he knew that he needed to recharge his spirit. So Jesus went off to a quiet place where he could be with God. He could have quiet, where he could pray, where he could think. And while he spent that time with God in a quiet place, his spirit was recharged. Before long, his disciples came to find him. Everyone's looking for you, they said. And he said, okay, let's get going, because I came to do this work. And they went and they traveled and he taught in synagogues. He preached, he healed, he cast out demons, and he traveled all around, bringing the word of God to people. But every now and again, he knew he didn't just need to recharge his body. He needed to recharge his spirit and he would find a quiet place. Jesus wants us to do that for our lives too. We know that we can rest and recharge our batteries for our body, but we need to make sure that we're monitoring our spiritual battery, that we're keeping tabs on how much energy we've got left spiritually. 
we need to reconnect regularly with God. Each day, you should find a time to pray, to read scripture, to worship with others like we do, right here, so that we can be recharged. That's important so that we can be connected to God, but also so that we can go out into the world and do his work. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, help us to remember that just as we recharge our bodies, we need to recharge our spirits. Help us to find ways to connect with you so that we can pray and hear your message and go out into the world and do your work. Amen. Now in preparation for our morning reading, I invite you to join with me in our prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Holy God, speak to us what has been told from the beginning, your word that is the foundation of the world. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Hear the word of the Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew and James and John. Okay, once again. Our gospel lesson today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, 29 through 39. Hear the word of the Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companion hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. And he answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A few weeks ago, I was walking through Walmart and I came across a puzzle that caught my eye. It was a colorful jigsaw puzzle with a balloon festival, and it consisted of 2,000 pieces. Now, over the past few months, I've tried to find new ways to occupy my time. Between the weather and the necessity for social distancing, I've spent a lot of time at home. Now, in many ways, this has been an amazing experience. I have mastered the art of um, baking sourdough bread and have had success both in making homemade pasta and yogurt too. Win-win. Eric and I are having fun gardening. We're starting our own seedlings from heirloom seeds that we harvested from last year's garden. Still, when I saw this puzzle, I got excited because I saw something new and I had to have it. The weeks before, I'd worked on a puzzle about 500 pieces, and that was so easy, I figured 2,000 pieces. Now that's going to be a wonderful challenge. Well, as the weeks went by, I realized that I uh, may have taken on more than I could chew. At first, the puzzle came together quickly. I was up for the challenge and spent many evenings hard at work. I got all the end pieces in their place, and the sky came together pretty well. I even put separate pieces 
based on their color on cookie sheets to separate them apart. But then things started to shift. Now, I had moments where I'd walk in the room and I would find handfuls of puzzle pieces they are missing places. And then I'd spend hours staring into nothingness. It didn't help matters that my cats decided that the table where my puzzle was was the perfect place to play. Hopefully all my puzzle pieces are still there. This past week, I decided to take a break. Hopefully, in the coming days, I can return to my beautiful puzzle with new excitement and hope. Now, in many ways, my puzzle dilemma is a reflection of the struggles that many of us are dealing with right now. It has already been a long, hard winter, and we are still in the midst of things. As we power through our busy and challenging schedules, we realize how hard things are right now. This is true of work, of family life, and even our ministry within the church. It is hard to be hopeful. And it is a challenge putting all the pieces together. There is so much need right now and so much that we want to do. And there doesn't seem to be enough time in the day. The pressure is on and yet we persevere. Still, how do we do so and remain healthy? And what keeps us from burning out? In today's message from Mark, we witness the miracle of Jesus' healing ministry. Jesus went with his disciples to Simon's house, and there they found Simon's mother-in-law suffering from a fever. Now, during Jesus' time, a fever was viewed as a curse from God and reflected as both a physical and spiritual ailment. But when Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up, she was blessed. When he touched her, he healed her, and immediately she began to serve him. She could do no other but to give thanks by walking in the path of Christ. We too know what it's like to be touched by Jesus. Knowing him changes everything. The true gift of this passage is not just the assurance of Jesus's power through God, but his guidance for us in discipleship. In Mark 21, 29 through 39, after spending the night healing many in this city, Jesus led by example by taking time for prayer and self-care. This passage expresses Jesus' own struggles, searching for his next step in his ministry. He could have stayed and healed more people and worked himself to the bone, but he realized that God was calling him to do something else, to do more elsewhere. In verse 38, Jesus states, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. Jesus' purpose in these miracles were to reflect the power of God. His ministry was driven by humility and given to the world out of pure love. Friends, I hope you're weak is full of joy and wonder, and the work you do is inspired by God. Make sure to take care of yourself as you tend to one another. And remember, God finds joy in happy hearts. He will help you put the pieces together. Friends, hearing these words, I ask you to join with me in saying, Amen. Thank you.
join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, before we begin our responsive prayer of intercession and our Lord's Prayer, I'd like to take a moment to lift up some of our friends and family who need prayers right now. Let us remember our friends at Lake Prince Woods and also prayers for their caregivers. Let us lift up prayers for doctors, nurses, and scientists who are working hard to care for us in our time of need. Let us lift up prayers for police and military members who are working hard to maintain peace. Let us lift up prayers for our students and our teachers as they go to school during a new normal. Special prayers for all who are dealing with illness, brokenness, and loss. And finally, prayers for our leadership, locally, nationally, and those in our church. We ask that God's wisdom lead us all. Now let us take a moment of silence before we join in prayer. Let us pray. God of the universe, you sit above the circle of the earth. And so we pray for the oceans and mountains, inland water and the air we breathe. Save and protect them, we pray. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Since the beginning of our faith, we have looked to you to gather the outcasts, heal the brokenhearted, and bind up the wounded. So we pray for the poor of the world, the sick, and the lonely. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, you build up Jerusalem, and so we pray for our country, for all the countries of the world, and for all of our leaders. May we all come to see that your delight is not the strength of a military, but in those who hope in your steadfast love. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. How good it is to sing praises to you, O oh God. We pray for your church here and around the world. Empower us to go from town to town and proclaim the message of Christ. Everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth, we bless you, for you are gracious. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us join in our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to God by giving of our tithes and offerings. 
let us pray. We sing to you, O God, with thanksgiving, making melody to you with our praise. Use these gifts to spread your gospel near and far for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, it has been a wonderful day of worship. Rejoice in your awesome God and search for ways within your heart to serve Him. Through our love, others will know God's closeness. And when we lose our step, God will find ways to put the pieces back together. Let us Spread the gospel free of charge. And may the spirit of Jesus take your hand and lift you up so that you may be of service to others. I send you out today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>